Welcome to RBC's Markets in Motion podcast, recorded April 11th, 2023. I'm Lori Calvacina, Head of U.S. Equity Strategy at RBC Capital Markets. Please listen to the end of this podcast for important disclaimers. Today in the podcast, we're talking sectors following the release of the results of our latest RBC analyst survey, in which we blend our own top-down strategy tools with our analyst views to arrive at our sector recommendations. Three big things you need to know. First, in our latest survey taken in late March and early April, RBC's U.S. equity analysts were a little north of neutral in their outlooks for performance over the next 6 to 12 months. Second, on their performance outlook, our analysts were most constructive on utilities and healthcare, followed by energy and tech, with the weakest views on consumer staples, industrials, and discretionary. And third, the combination of our analyst views, our ESG strategy team sector scorecard, and our own macro tools keep us overweight utilities, healthcare, energy, and tech, and underweight staples and discretionary. We've also downgraded financials to market weight. If you'd like to hear more, here's another five minutes. While you're waiting, a quick reminder that you can subscribe to this podcast on Apple and Spotify. Now the details. Starting with takeaway number one. In our latest survey, RBC's U.S. equity analysts were a little north of neutral in their outlooks for performance on a 6-12 to month view. Our analysts also generally crowded into the middle, with no one saying they were very bullish or very bearish. All fell into the bullish, neutral, or bearish camps. We give them a choice of five options. We always get asked about how our analyst views have changed, and here it's worth noting that they got le- that those getting less optimistic on performance relative to our year in 2022 poll far outnumbered those that got more optimistic. Just three of our analysts got more constructive, media, building products, and chemicals, while 13 got less constructive, internet social media and search, internet retail and travel, oil field services, refiners, regional banks, specialty and consumer finance, life insurance, managed care, life science tools and diagnostics, IT services, coatings, fertilizer, and communication services. So it was across a good number of broader sectors. Looking beyond performance, our analyst views on current valuations, supply chains, pricing, and the impact of potential Fed rate cuts had more clear positive tilts than their views on performance. Our analysts also leaned optimistic on the issue of how their companies would manage through higher rates for longer from a balance sheet perspective, as well as their demand assessments. Their views on the impact of the banking crisis and the possibility of a sluggish economic recovery were a little south of neutral. Moving on to takeaway number two on the performance outlook, our analysts were most constructive on utilities and healthcare followed by energy and tech, with the weakest views for consumer staples, industrials, and discretionary. Looking across all of the questions that we asked, the tilts were most negative on consumer staples and most positive on utilities and healthcare. This suggests to us that investors should be selective in terms of how they add defensive exposure and contributes to our own U.S. equity strategy overweights on utilities and healthcare and underweight on consumer staples. Meanwhile, our industrial analysts continued to have one of the more pessimistic performance outlooks, but they also had clear positive tilts on five of the other nine questions that we asked, specifically margins, supply chains, pricing, the impact of rate cuts, and the impact of higher rates for longer on balance sheets. This divergence contributes to our own U.S. equity strategy market weight on the sector, which diverges from our analyst team's more pessimistic performance outlook. We think simply they're more constructive on some of the hot-button issues of the day than they are on performance itself. One other thing that jumped out, rate cuts by the Fed were seen as having a positive impact in most sectors. Our communication services and tech analysts were most likely to see rate cuts by the Fed as positives for their industries, and rate cuts were seen as least impactful for consumer staples, followed by energy and financials. This explains a lot of the recent price action in the market. Our analysts also expressed general optimism that their companies could manage through higher rates for longer from a balance sheet perspective for most sectors. The only sectors where our analysts expressed a pessimistic view on this issue were communication services and REITs. Wrapping up with takeaway number three, the combination of our analyst views, our ESG strategy team sector scorecard, and our own macro tools keep us overweight on utilities, healthcare, energy, and tech, and underweight consumer staples and discretionary. These tools collectively also support our decision to downgrade financials to market weight, a move that reduces our cyclical exposure and tilts our exposure back towards defensives for now. Though we're not overly bearish on the broader U.S. equity market, we prefer to be described as neutral. This makes sense given that the S&P 500 has been trading around our year-end 2023 price target of 4100 
We continue to think that U.S. equity markets remain in the midst of a messy post-crisis normalization period and will stay choppy for a bit longer. On the cyclical side, we'd call attention to our thoughts on financials and energy. We think energy is the better choice for an overweight within the cyclical bucket for now. While some wrinkles in our energy overweight have emerged, specifically negative earnings and sales revisions, the sector's weak historical performance after both final Fed hikes and first cuts, its tendency to underperform when inflation expectations are moderating, and less optimism from our analysts, we continue to be struck by how good the sector looks across a number of our other tools. In particular, it continues to stack up favorably versus other sectors on valuation, and it also has a lot of dividend yield appeal in a market where dividend yield appeal is lacking for the broader S&P 500. On financials, reduced analyst optimism from some but not all of our teams isn't the only reason to take a step back. Earnings and sales revisions have been negative. Regulatory concerns are likely to be an overhang for quite some time. The sector historically has also performed well following final Fed rate hikes, but it tends to be a bit weaker than other sectors following first cuts. Financials has also become one of the most sensitive areas to the ISM cycle, underperforming what ISM manufacturer is following. We suspect opportunity is building here, but we'd like to see some of these issues play out before getting more constructive. That's all for now. Thanks for listening, and be sure to reach out to your RBC representative with any questions. This content is based on information available at the time it was recorded and is for informational purposes only. It is not an offer to buy or sell or a solicitation, and no recommendations are implied. It is outside the scope of this communication to consider whether it is suitable for you and your financial objectives.